Welcome to the world of manual drones. I'm very passionate about technology and drones, and I imagine the future to be with flying cars, taxi drones, drones delivering our goods. Not like this. What you've just seen is really far away from that vision, but that's the current state of most of the drone technology out there. And I'm very happy to show you what a new uh, generation of autonomous drones is capable of and how they benefit many people and industries around the world already. How you already benefit from it, maybe without even knowing it. Why me? When I was a child, I always wanted to become a helicopter pilot and fly a rescue helicopter. However, it was not possible for me at the time. I didn't want to go to the military and I definitely had not enough money to afford a private pilot's license. So the entry barrier of becoming a helicopter pilot was simply too high for me. So I followed my second passion. I studied film. And for years, I've been working with camera drones, manual ones, crashed a bunch of them as well. But I found my dream job, flying kind of a helicopter and combining it with camera technology. So but what's the problem with drones these days? Three things. First. They're mainly flown manual. Some systems help me to avoid some obstacles, but in the end, one wrong movement of the control sticks can lead to an accident to this. Second, the further the drone is away, the harder it is for me to get a sense of depth and perspective, and especially the distance from the drone to obstacles. So, for example, a tree. One mistake, and we end up back here. And last but not least, if I turn the drone around, Directions are reversed, left is right, right is left. And now take first responders looking for missing people with drones. They can't fully focus on the mission when they have to take all these things into account. Autonomous drones change that. So besides the main camera in front of these drones, they feature an array of navigational cameras. So three more cameras on top and three more cameras on the bottom. Each of the six cameras has a field of view of 200 degrees, and all cameras combined enable an omnidirectional perception around the drone. Just imagine you would have placed six eyes around your head instead of two, so you could see everything around you without turning around, looking up or down. Same goes for the drone. And the videos of all these cameras is combined and processed by powerful neural networks for real-time 3D mapping. The drone recreates the world around it. This is how it looks when the drone flies through a dense forest. Every pixel we call here, it's a voxel, a volumetric pixel in 3D space. Here the drone goes through confined indoor space. And now, an artificial intelligence takes this model, it updates it at a rate of over 1 million data points per second, to fly the drone autonomously through that ever-changing 3D world. It's like having a professional pilot sitting in the drone flying for you. It keeps you safe from all the obstacles and it turns anyone into a professional drone pilot. That was no overnight success. It took us around seven years to get the technology where it is today. So I found my dream job already working with technology and drones, flying things. But for me, really, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience to make sure that this technology is no concept tested in the lab, but my job is to make sure it's deployed in many different industries. One of that is the inspection industry. So on your way to work, how many bridges do you cross? Did you ever count, noticed? Bridges need constant inspection to be safe. In Germany alone, we're talking about 40,000 bridges. And in order to look at critical parts, you usually need climbers, heavy equipment, sometimes even helicopters, depending on the structure. It's expensive, it's time consuming, and it can be extremely dangerous, especially if you have endangered structures after a storm or after an earthquake. And most important, bridges have to be closed for this, and we will be stuck in traffic. So inspectors can take now these autonomous drones and fly through any spot around that structure. For them, it's easy and safe. And the best thing is, while they look at any angle to get pictures of what they need, 
the bridge doesn't have to be closed for this. So we can enjoy our way to work. The inspectors are safe on the ground, looking up. And the drone in the sky is safe too, because the AI saves and protects the drone from all obstacles. And these people can just do their job. And it doesn't matter if it's a bridge, could be any structure. So if you have one of these drones, could be also your house. So if you want to take a look at your roof after a storm, instead of getting the ladder out of the garage, climbing up yourself, take one of these drones, uh, get the pictures of your roof, the drone will keep you safe. And most important, you are safe uh, on the ground. Safe, uh, the same for the personnel. But true autonomy even takes it one step further. So based on the AI which flies and protects you, we have another AI for autonomous inspection. So the drone explores any given structure by itself, and it creates a model while it's flying of that structure. And then it will capture every surface multiple times from different angles for you in an all automated process. So that means I don't have to fly anymore, and I don't have to take pictures in the sky with the drone anymore. The drone does it for me in an automated process. And with this, I get a well-documented site, and I can be sure not to miss out on anything. And I can also take this data and create a high-fidelity 3D model out of it. And with this, I'm not only limited inspecting while I'm at the bridge, but later in 3D, I can look at any spot. And I don't need climbers, and I don't need cranes. And with this method, I can now organize entire sites. I can concentrate on finding weak spots or damages. I can mark these and I can um, measure them. And this is really changing this industry, autonomous drone technology. But we're not only using this technology to, for inspection, but also preservation. More and more these days, we see heavy, heavy weather events easily destroy invaluable heritage. And we've all seen it in the news how a fire was wiping out the history of Notre Dame. And we can't always avoid these things to happen, but now we can use autonomous technology to generate profound data for reconstruction or preservation. And this data is often really rare. So one of my projects um, was this. This is the Einhards Basilica near Frankfurt am Main, Germany. It's built in the 9th century and one of the last Carolingian architecture left in Germany. Invaluable heritage. My job was to create a digital replica of the site, and, um, especially the building. And doing this with drones is not a new process, but usually it takes a lot of expertise and time. Because with manual drones, I have to fly manually, watch out for obstacles, and then take single pictures. A site like this could require at least 2,000 or more pictures. And you can imagine that would, would keep me quite busy. So I take an autonomous drone, bring it in the sky first. I define a rough perimeter, and then the drone goes, explores. And the white mesh you see, that's the 3D model the drone generates while flying. And I see that live. And from this model, the drone will generate a closed, tailor-made flight path around the object and then capture everything for me. And in as little as 30 minutes, the drone captures the entire site for me. And I take the pictures the drone took and feed it into photogrammetry software. This software takes 2D images and recreates 3D imagery out of it. And I also want to show you the model. And in a very short amount of time, I get this and I can move to any spot and the, this technology, this autonomous technology, helped me to preserve this, the technology in general, many other sites forever in the digital world. But it's not only to create a nice-looking 3D model. Um, with this data, we can draw valuable insights about the state of the building. So when I looked at the side of the building in the 3D model, you see that the rooftop is slightly skewed. Looking from above, we can display different heights here represented by colors. So if it's the same color, it's the same height. And just focusing on the rooftop, the skew becomes pretty obvious. And we have concrete height data now for every point. And with this data, I can not only go and find out what's causing this and then support the structure, but also in a year from now, I can do another scan very quickly, very easily, and then compare the models to track changes over time. So if I did something to support the roof, did it help? So is it staying or does it get worse? 
And these valuable insights, this data, I don't get, get from just looking at buildings or just taking manual single pictures. I only get this data by these sophisticated 3D models with the help of autonomous drones. Let's move on from saving buildings to saving people. First responders also using more and more these autonomous drones. And just very recently, the drone crew of the Civil Air Patrol in the United States, they were deployed to find a missing woman. Not only did they fly their drone high to get a good aerial overview, but they took the drone and flew very low through and around the vegetation. So they also had search crews by foot, but they would have been slowed down with the rough terrain and all the bushes. But the AI of the drone helped the pilots to safely navigate above the bushes, but in between the trees. For them, it was easy and safe, and they could focus on the mission. And in the end, the missing woman was found and rescued. That's not only a great example how drones save lives on a daily basis, but also how autonomous drones help first responders really to focus on the mission instead of handling complex technology. Take an accident site like this. Usually when something like this happens, we're also stuck in traffic. And law enforcement on site, they have only very limited time to capture a site before the cleanup has to begin. Because we and others, we want to keep going. So with an autonomous drone, law enforcement takes it and the drone captures the entire site in as little as 10 minutes. It's great for first responders and law enforcement because they now, they know that they captured every angle of that accident site. And for us as well, because we won't be stuck in traffic longer than needed. And again, reconstructing this data later in 3D gives us completely different insights into accidents. And law enforcement is not only limited inspecting while they're at the accident site, but they also can go later to that model, move freely and uh, do further analysis, maybe find out what's, cause, what's causing this and help um, change that in the future. And every model I see coming out of a computer, I have to smile because uh, it reminds me a lot like a CSI show I watch in the evening and it's super thrilling for me every time I see this coming out of, of pictures. All right, so what's the next step in this evolution? Not far from today, we will place drones permanently at, at important sites without the need of any pilots on site. And then from everywhere in the world, I simply press a button from my computer. The drone will be carried out of a special box. It will take off automatically. And from here, I can fly around. The AI will keep me safe. And I can also initiate an autonomous inspection here, for example, of a construction site, which changes every day. So I can fly every day. And once the mission is complete, the drone just flies back and then will be transported back into the box. Once it's back, the data has been uploaded to the cloud and I and my coworkers, we can also access it from everywhere in the world. And then the batteries get charged and the drone is waiting for my or your next job. Sounds good, right? So you've just seen a handful of exciting examples what this technology enables to date. If you rem remember from the beginning, the high entry barrier of becoming a helicopter pilot, autonomous technology turns anyone into a professional pilot, lowering down that barrier. And that technology now is easy to use, it's safe, and most important, uh, most important, it's accessible to anyone. So you could say autonomy democratizes the sky. And I'm really excited to be part of that revolution happening now in many different areas. And um, every day, uh, it's, it's thrilling for me to see how people from different industries take that technology and how they get inspired by it. And I'm very curious how you will get inspired by it and what you could do with it. Because I'm sure the future of drones is autonomous. <laughs> <laughs>